Hello everyone, Jimmy Ziggy from Ziggy's Lawn and Landscape here today and I'm going to teach you how to save a lot of money on your Skag windstorm when this part fails. If you have a Skag windstorm and you're not familiar with this piece or if you don't even have one and you're planning on getting one, this is the motor that turns the nozzle in the front and we had one fail at about 90 hours and we got a new one but i was thinking this is a car window motor that skag took from someone else and made it to fit theirs they own they own this part number if you can see this part number 486671 they own this part number and they probably have some sort of ownership over this part but this is a general part for the most part you get it but this is a general piece in the automotive industry that would open a car window motor and i was able to back source this model here to another source that's way cheaper than what skag is asking for this out the door at the dealership it depends where you're going this is 150 to 170 dollars for this little motor which is outrageous the really the thing that makes this so much different than any other one on the market is this gear right here. They stole this motor design from another place is what I'm getting at here in this video. So I'm going to show you how to make this part for $30 instead of buying it from the deal. I'm not saying you're going to get ripped off. You're still going to get a high quality piece, but this can be done a lot cheaper and you can have five of these for the same price of what the dealership wants for one. So. I'm going to break this down and show you how I made my own part that will bypass going to the dealer and it's going to be just save you money in the end. So this is our Skag Windstorm. It's brand new as of this January. And now I think it's knocking on 100 hours. But at 90, we had this motor fail. We replaced it with a new one. But I was thinking, you know, that is just an insane price to pay for this motor for something so basic. I was thinking, you know, there's got to be another one out there because if people are designing something in an engineering standpoint, whatever's on the shelf is the best option to go with. For example, if you're a company, you don't want to spend R&D research and development on a new part if it already exists. So why would you do that? It's just a waste of money. And then you got to design the part and then make it and why not just take it when it's right on the shelf in front of you? Like, for example, nuts and bolts. No company makes their own nuts and bolts for these machines. They get them from somewhere else because they're already designed. They're on the shelf. A bunch of these parts are. I mean, the whole back half of this from here back is a Skag V-Ride. It's the same thing. It's identical, everything. So they didn't design anything new. They just took this design since it was already on the shelf and they made the Skag Windstorm out of it. So that's what their thinking is. And they took this motor which is like i've said is a car window motor and they've put this bigger gear on it to make this nozzle spin way faster which is if you think about it the gear on a on a regular car motor which i actually have i'll show you it's a lot smaller because the window doesn't move nearly as fast as this does and this has to spin a long set of gears right here a car window is a scissor lift usually and it's not there's not as many gears to travel through as this. So this has to spin it really quick in, a, in order to get that done. So anyways, we did the repair on another video. It's only three bolts to switch this. It's just the, the insane thing is the cost. So I was able to make one. So do you see what I'm talking about now? I did a back source on this. It took me about 15 minutes to find this part. If you type in the part number for the Skag part, you'll not find anything. You'll only find it goes right back to skag but i did some searching on amazon and on the left i just ran through a bunch of different car motors car window motors that i saw and this is from a toyota and it fits like a couple different models actually across the board like chevy i think has a few models even the suzuki car i think has a few models so this is a fairly popular part that skag apparently took you could see how similar everything is so my thinking was hey you know what if skag has the only difference really being this gear on the end if you flip this one over you can see how much smaller it is like i was talking about before this motor is only held in with three screws 
and it has like a spiral gear up through here. You could see it where it would sit. And we're actually going to take this apart. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a combined product of these two. It's the motor that goes bad when it gets hot. It'll burn out and then you're stuck because it won't move. But the gearing is just, it's just metal. Basically it's gears. So we're going to undo these. It's only three Phillips heads and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. So three screws later, and it is so easy to pop these off. This one comes out and you can see there's the gear on the end. This is the original motor. And then you pop this one out. And here's the other motor. It's identical, except for there's a little bit of grease on this one, but it's identical if you look at it. The gearing and everything, the length of the rod is the same. The motor is basically the same, except for where they soldered in their own connector, which like I said, I'm gonna talk about that in a second. But you can see this gearing we don't need this anymore so we could toss it off to the side we need this piece which after you spin it that's all there is is just that gear so you simply just put the new motor in and it slots right in and then you just replace your three screws okay all back together and you almost can't tell that it's a different thing and now i'm real quick before we install it on the machine i just want to talk about wiring they give you three different plug options and they all just clip in none of them directly plug into what's on the machine which is unfortunate but it's only two wires thank god so that just clips right into the motor like so and you're probably wondering well how are we going to plug it in if we don't have the right clip that's not the right clip but you have a broken motor here that you're not going to use ever again you're just going to throw this in the trash obviously i just put it back together for video purposes with the new uh, gearing mechanism, but you have a perfectly fine pigtail right here. So we're gonna cut it and we're gonna cut it here and we're gonna make this one splice onto this one because we don't wanna cut wiring on the machine if you don't have to, because then they might give you an issue for a warranty or something like that. So we're basically gonna, well, this is a good motor, but we're gonna cut that other one and we're gonna make our own connection to plug right into here, which is just two wires, it's simple enough okay here's your finished product i usually like to solder and heat shrink but just for the purpose of this video this motor is going to be a backup one for us since we already have the new one but these little crimpers work good i have these this quick tool to do it so these work fine i'm going to electrical tape that up a little bit but now you got your uh your oem connector so it's just a plug and play basically just red to red black to uh blue and uh, this thing's ready to go on. We're going to put it on and just test it out. Make sure that it works. All right. Moment of truth here. Plugs in perfectly. Bolts up great. Fits right. It's basically like it's meant to be. Let's see if it works. works so there you guys have it there all right well with that said there you have it for this video on how to just make a cheaper motor that works this is going to be a backup for us like i've said we're going to stick with that original one the question becomes how reliable is this as an aftermarket part with this motor it's not even an oem original motor from a car uh, so how reliable is this that's to be determined by using it, but we're gonna use it as a backup. And I mean, I would rather buy five of these than one of those, because this isn't like a life or death part that if it fails, like, oh man, the, the whole day's ruined. It's only three bolts to pop it off and put a new one on. So I'd rather have this just as a backup so that if I do run into this problem, I don't have to go to the dealership and spend that 170 on a rainy day when I really need the machine. I just have this in the truck already and it's ready to go just in case it ever happens. I just wanted to share my findings with the YouTube world and everybody who has the windstorm and see what you guys think. But maybe you guys can find a different model that's maybe an OEM from a car or something like that. But this seemed to work fine. I turned the PTO on even and it did fine job moving the nozzle. So uh, we'll see what happens with it. I also just want to state that there's a bunch of different options out there on the market. If you just go on a Google, 
Toyota window motor, you can see a bunch of different options and take a pick from one of those if you want to. And uh, here's my tripod and my table for today. And I'm not wearing any of my work stuff, obviously, because today is Saturday, I'm not working. I just thought I'd make this quick video for you guys on our windstorm. We haven't had any more issues with the nozzles so far. Somebody said in the comments from our last video that you shouldn't lube up the gear because supposedly it's supposed to run dry. There's like plastic bushing or something. So by that time it was already too late. We had already sprayed that grease on there, but it has been working great since, since we've done that. So I don't know what the deal is with that, but uh i looked at this ring too i mean it doesn't nothing looks bent i think the old motor just got tired or it was defective or something but it works great so and also when i say that they stole that idea i obviously i don't mean that skag stole it they probably bought into that motor design somehow or another or something they're never going to tell you that because they want you to think that they have a monopoly on that part which they kind of do to make this machine work but um i don't mean they stole the design i just mean that they took it from somewhere else and worked with it i've heard that they've done revisions on that motor so i don't know all of what that entails and they've upgraded it or something for the one that they have in house so that might be something to keep in mind they're supposedly on their third revision from what i've heard but like we said this video was just to get a backup for this motor just in case anything happens and you need it for the rest of the day or something or whatever it's good to have that backup but who knows maybe it'll work forever i i have no idea you only time will tell if somebody actually uses it but like i said we have that oem part on there so there's no sense in taking a gamble on this one that i just built just keep it in the truck behind the seat and it'll be ready whenever we need it so that's all i got for you guys today i hope you guys enjoyed the video wanted to share some more information on our machinery with you guys so if you want to see more, go down there, hit that subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you guys in our next video.